All right, today on the Happy Silent Nerd and, and, uh, and also obsolete but neat, we'll make it a double episode this time, we're going to take a look at the old analog C-band channels. There's one left, the last analog channel. There's actually a few feeds and various uh, things that are still on analog C-band, even a few KU-band feeds that are still being used by analog. But I've used my old 1980s MACOM satellite receiver to pick up one channel very snowy with the equipment that I'm using. So the satellite dish is pretty much, the actuator is pulled all the way in. It's pretty much the second most western satellite that I'm able to receive. So the LMB I'm using for this satellite is a titanium LMB that has a dual output. So I'm running the, t the channel, the I'm running the uh, cable, the coax cable, two, co two co coax cables in the house. So one's running downstairs and one's running on the upstairs TV. Hello my satellite neighbors, Robbie Strike the Happy Satellite Nerd and this also is going to be a little bit of an obsolete but neat episode as well. So today we're looking at analog C-band satellite signals and C-SPAN which is one of the few last analog C-band channels that are being broadcast. So let's take a look at uh, this receiver here, this old MACOM analog satellite receiver that I have here. And, uh, and how we were able to receive analog C-band satellite signals still in 2020. Now in the modern day, most satellite broadcasts on C-band and KU-band that are either free uh, satellite TV, free to air stuff, or um, encrypted, like, encrypted uh, broadcast stuff that are used for cable systems and whatnot are all digital. There is only a handful of analog channels when I looked over at Linksack today. And C-SPAN is one of them. And it's kind of cool. I, I kind of wish I figured this out years ago that I could play around with this satellite receiver, this old from the 1980s. So getting close to 40 years old. And this was one of the early uh, C-band satellite receivers to come out during the heyday of uh, satellite. Now I know there were some that would go through the frequencies and this MA com box only does, from my knowledge, will only do uh, C band. It won't do KU band. Some of the later analog, some of the later analog satellite receivers did do C and KU band. Like every digital receiver that you can buy today will do C and KU band. I get that question a lot. Do I need to buy a, uh, a separate receiver for C or KU band? No, nope. if you buy a digital receiver, a modern day, if you've got one that was built within the last few years, it's probably going to have everything and make sure it has Hevec H265 because that's pretty much where a lot of the broadcasting will be going to in the next couple of years. Come to freesatellitetv.net or the Free Satellite TV page here on Facebook and join our groups and discussion groups about Free Satellite TV and enjoy some of the videos that we link here to help you learn about Free Satellite TV. All right, I'm just gonna turn the volume down here on the TV. The TV is very snowy. So this is my setup that I'm using here. I have a built in the 80s uh, MA Com satellite receiver. This is an analog satellite receiver. And this is my open box, this is my modern day open box satellite receiver. So what I'm doing, just to kind of give you an idea of what's happening here is, I'm using this satellite receiver to change the polarity. So for example, I can go, so this is on a vertical transponder. So if I go to this cha channel, it's uh, on a, it switches it over to horizontal. So there's the, so this satellite receiver just, basically I have it looped out through there just to control the vertical and horizontal uh, polarity. Also, I have a dissect switch running to uh, different uh, LMBs, a KU band dish and all that. So I use this to control it. Now, as you can see, the picture quality for the analog C-band signal on C-SPAN 
it's very snowy on my end. Now I am running a lot of coax cable, RG6 coax cable from the other side of the house where the satellite dish is. And this is, uh, the reason why I use this TV is the modern TVs like this one right here, you see up in the shot, I'm just using it for a viewfinder for this video. Um, <laughs> I hate the new TVs cause they have like, uh, if they have a snowy signal, like basically when you're changing the channels, it looks like this static. So all the other channels are like are static on the satellite receiver from the analog days. So nothing's on there except the one last analog channel on this satellite, which would be C-SPAN. It's pretty cool that I'm still able to get this to work. I've tried it years before and I've done a video uh, explaining this whole setup here with, with all the old uh, C-band stuff. The guy that I bought my original satellite dish from he insisted that I would take this receiver because I wouldn't be able to receive uh, receive anything without this modern day digital satellite receiver, um, old fashioned antique analog satellite receiver. So just to go through some of these controls, these buttons don't are not doing much. What would happen in the olden days is this receiver would be controlling the polarity. So it had a power supply that would run to the L and A that uh, somebody in the comments was insisting that it's an L and A, not an L and B, um, to, re um, to receive this. And it would switch the polarity with a motor. And now we just have like two polarities in the feed horns typically. And, and, uh, and then uh, the antennas will just sit there and they're there all the time. And the switch will just switch between your vertical and horizontal. So there's not, on this satellite, there's nothing in the clear except for this analog channel. And I've had people ask me about C-SPAN before. Can I get C-SPAN on satellite? I see it on the charts, but it says NTSC, which means that it's analog. And it's one of the last analog channels on satellite. And as I say, it's coming in very snowy. Now, it's probably a lot of how I have everything configured here. I have everything specialized for digital. And I'm running through a lot of coax with uh, connectors. And I'm also looping out the, sig the analog signals being looped out of my digital receiver into this box. With the MACOM, the other settings I have here are this one here. Uh, it has this little light that will switch around and go... It'll move this little light around here. What that is for is the audio, just for the fine tuning of the audio. Does nothing, everything pretty much this side of the satellite receiver uh, does the audio. There's a few, a few uh, knobs here for the uh, for the skew adjust for the vertical and horizontal. They're not going to really do anything because that's not it's not hooked up to anything. There's also does this thing change the? Uh, I don't know if I can move the dish. Apparently with this remote that came with this satellite dish. It does have a thing for the antenna moving east and west. This thing is not hooked up to the motor. Now, some people do use their old, some people use their old satellite uh, uh, receivers to push their motors. Now I have the op the uh, uh, super power jack uh, dish mover to do that. It's very interesting that there still is analog channels in 2020 of the recording of this video. And you can get C-SPAN, which uh, a lot of people they're interested in what's happening in politics and C-SPAN and figure since this is a public channel, it should be publicly broadcast, but they're using a whole transponder to send this, uh, to send this channel. It is coming in very snowy though, <laughs> but I'm very North of the United States. The satellite receiver also has this uh, button here. It's a, uh, a video scan, which will just scan through all the channels. And there's nothing else on except for channel seven, which the interesting thing is that when I, when I went to Linksat, it actually said transponder seven is what this, uh, frequency was on. So that was, that was interesting that, um, and I did see a lot of signal quality on seven. So I, I went and looked at that when I was uh, tuning my dish. Now I did go upstairs and I hooked this thing up so that I can send the signal upstairs. And I tried to tune my dish a little bit, but with my setting at this time, now I might do a video later and I'll take this, I'll take this thing outside and I'll hook it up uh, directly without the dissect switch. Maybe that will give me a better, uh, and, and it'll be less uh, coax cable. Maybe it'll, it'll give me a better, better picture. Uh, but I'm kind of excited to see this. I've had somebody in, my, in the com some people in the comments um, ask uh, about the analog channels. And well, as I said, I had to use my analog TV to get it. <laughs> uh, the uh, the newer TVs just weren't able 
to uh, do that. So all I did is it has a channel three output. So this is on channel uh, satellite 131 west and put note C-SPAN as I say the... Yeah, the issue, one issue is the, when you screw it in tight, the signal will go to 100%, but you'll lose the picture. Okay, the last time I did a, uh, I talked about this old receiver, I didn't really go through it. So it has a power, the power on and off. It has your, this your channel select. Now on this remote here, which came with this uh, satellite receiver. It kind of has a we the weirdest scheme for buttons I've ever seen. It has your PS set, reset, and it has like your channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that, and an ODD and even and your audio program to give you an example how it would work there. So there it is on channel ones, three. So it goes up through these channels in a weird way. There's seven again, and it's pulling up uh, C-SPAN. And it's huge, this LED light bulb thing here is huge on this box. So it goes through 24 transponders. It's actually working better than when I uh, had it on before. It has uh, the video scan feature, which I talked about earlier. And it just goes through all the channels. Uh, this thing here, which is the motor, motor on SEEC, whatever that is. It doesn't really do anything, obviously. I think it's because it's, it has to be connected up. And this is just wide for your audio signal. And you can select uh, different um, settings for your audio. And then there's this button here, which... I don't know if it'll, it'll kick in. Here we go. There, you can move around your uh, audio features. And then you have audio channels that you can go through. But with this program here, the only one that I can get, it only has the one to go through. So I have the satellite input. Now what I found with this issue, I don't know if it's because modern satellites have like a power in and out, but I found when I tighten this too much, I lose the signal and then the signal quality comes on. I'll have to turn the satellite and show you that. But when I back this off just a bit, I get the picture back. So something, I got something going on here. I'm not sure about. And I just got this right to TV set up now. It will output to channels two or three, like an old analog receiver. Okay, and I also played around here a little bit with the video and audio devices. So this will allow, this is where I was plugging in here, but this is obviously an input, like if you want to put your VCR or something as a pass through uh, or the accessory input. So, but if you want to have like, you know, connecting your satellite receiver, your analog satellite receiver to your VCR, these would be your stereo output and your uh, video. So I was able to put my analog output over here from my MA Com box using this RCA, uh, you know, connection connector. No S video. This I believe this box is made well before S video. And my open box, what I just have here is you can see the cables here. So this is the cable coming in from the satellite, and then here's a cable that's the loop out cable. You can't really see the font there. But some satellite receivers do have a loop out. A lot of the new, a lot of satellite receivers don't have a loop out feature. You can get a splitter to split split it as well. And I just have the RCA output on that going to, going to a different source. So that's how I was able to get this analog working with my modern day equipment. And in 2020, I still use an analog TV. I love my analog TV. People still keep them for gaming and other things like that. Analog TVs rock, man. I love analog stuff. So you can see C-SPAN on AMC 11 at 131 West. It's down here at 3840. It's an analog transponder, so it takes up the whole transponder. That's part of what analog did. People like to talk about the glory days of analog, but the truth of it too is, uh, this is one transponder now, and it fits like, I don't know, a whole whack of channels in one transponder, where, where in the old days, one channel fit on each analog transponder. Although a lot of them are encrypted. It's interesting how there actually is more channels today with digital than there actually was back in the 80s in the analog days. So that is the MACOM satellite receiver. Pretty neat, pretty big, like these things were big. They were expensive too. I'm glad receivers are much cheaper now. I mean, under $200 you can get a receiver. 
these things back in the day were thousands of dollars just for the receiver and then you had to buy you had to get the satellite dish installed and all that so you're in the lap of luxury if you had a c-band satellite dish back in the 80s subscribe like share and also check out my playlists on my channel robbie strike which i've renamed ottawa octane to robbie strike but the earl is at this time still youtube slash ottawa octane slash videos you can find me on the internet that way is a good way to finding me so please subscribe to my youtube channel i have other links here at the top you can find my facebook page up here you can find my twitter my patreon and my paypal donate button is there if you want to give me a donation to help this channel so that I can put more money and resources toward it. Also, come check out my playlists on the playlist tabs and sit back and watch videos play back on and on. Watch some of my feature or my feature episodes about doing things on Linux, my video centers episodes, old school comedy stuff, my Atari fanboy stuff, and how to set up a big old satellite dish, and reviews on things, software to find radios. And my obsolete but neat series where I go through many old, uh, obscure technologies. You can even do this cool feature if I'm talking too slow for you or too fast. You can change the playback speed so that it is... Let me slow it down. There was the... Pole position for the Atari. Not very you know, fancy picture on the box, just some lines with pole position written on So if you want to change the playback speed, that's a fun feature. Also, uh, check out the uh, C SPAN website here. I don't see any option for it to stream, but they do show streaming clips of like uh, segments, but not like a, a live stream. Sometimes they do carry the live streams and they probably do it on their Facebook page. Watching TV through a satellite dish is so much more cooler than streaming over the internet. Even if it's analog and snowy, it's just more cooler than streaming over the internet. So come to my YouTube page and then when you get there, the YouTube settings aren't very good. It doesn't show you a whole lot of videos. So just click on this tab here for videos. And you can go through all my videos that I've done over the years. Recently, I've done a video about free and legal streaming channels that you can download an M3U list. There's a link in the description of the video. All my videos do have um, links and, and descriptions. Have descri links in the descriptions to find more information on various information. I've also done a how to make a cable TV system with this HDMI Thor. ATSC modulator that will allow you to create multiple TV channels streaming through a one coax cable. And if you're going to stream and you're being blocked, you can use ExpressVPN. So check out my video about ExpressVPN. And if you're looking to buy a KU band satellite dish, I kind of did a breakdown here for a free to air starter kit. And I got videos about satellite and all sorts of technologies, software to find radio stuff, reviews on things like ed video editors and software. So take this, take this page a uh, quick look. Check out some of my videos, like and share and subscribe. Please subscribe. I'd love to reach a hundred thousand because then YouTube would really to get things rolling for me to get views and give this video a like it really helps me in the algorithm because otherwise these videos just get buried and no one gets to find out about the wonderful world of free tv It's fuzzy. Now the fuzziness, I'm not gonna say it's 5G, but it's 5G.